So during this final project, we're going to build a deep neural network and use reinforcement learning to solve a cart and pull balancing problem that uses the OpenAI Gym. Uh, OpenAI Gym is a toolkit for developing and comparing reinforcement learning algorithms that was built by OpenAI, a nonprofit artificial intelligence research company founded by Elon Musk and Sam Altman, which is, of course, OpenAI right here. OpenAI is really easy to install. What we're going to do to install OpenAI is use Git. So if you don't have Git, you're going to have to follow the installation instructions online here. Um, thankfully, if you're on Windows, it's really easy. You simply click this link. Um, Mac and Linux, just as e easy as well, a link or an app Git. Um, so once you have installed Git, we'll be able to get going with OpenAI. So OpenAI just provides us with, or OpenAI Gym specifically, provides us with different environments that we can do reinforcement learning in. So these environments could be Atari games, they could be different little scenarios. A lot of the environments require additional dependencies, so we're going to use one of the simpler ones, but if you want to play around with, for example, the Atari games, please do, because OpenAI is a great source and a great way to compare different networks and the performance of different uh, artificial intelligent networks. So let's go ahead and get started. What you're going to do is you're going to open up your command prompt. I'm going to run it as an, an administrator. Sometimes the download permissions are a little bit different depending on if you're an ad administrator or not. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the folder where I have been making these projects. So you see we have some of the, the past projects here for different units. Um, this is going to be the final project, OpenAI. So what we're going to get to install um, in, install OpenAI is a simple git command, and if git's shown in your environment variables, which it should be if you follow the installation, you can simply type git clone, and here is the link, OpenAI slash gym. So let's go ahead and click enter there. And so what this does is it just downloads a zip file and unpacks it into whichever directory you're in. So if you see now, I now have a folder over here called Jim. So if we move into that folder, we can go here. All, the, all that is is uh, a simple file with, with all of the necessary scripts and stuff to run OpenAI Jim environments, as well as download and install instructions. Like requirements.txt is going to tell pip, which we'll use to unpack this, which Python libraries it depends on. And uh, so to do that, we're going to use pip, which should already be on your computer if you've followed along with the other projects. If not, it's really easy to get. And we're just going to do a minimal minimal installation and a period to show that we want to install in the current current folder and directory. So let's go ahead and click enter and do that. And this will go. So like I already have NumPy installed, and it's just going to skip through those. And that was really quick, successfully installed Jim. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and get into our Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to make this in the tutorial folder. And again, just type Jupyter Notebook. And that'll open that up. It's really easy if Jupyter is in your Python path variables or in, in your general path variables. So that's going, and here we go, opens up. All right, and so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start a new a new project. I'm just gonna use the default Python, which should be Python 2.7, but we can check that. So what we're gonna do is, is import sys, because we want to ch check and make sure that we're all using the same Python versions. I'll do sys.version. So this is a good thing to do at first. So it is Python 2.7, and it's the Windows 64-bit version. So now that we have that, let's move on to importing our open AI gym. Let's make sure we have this. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a print gym.version. We're also going to do import Keras. So if you don't have Keras installed, um, you're going to have to do that. But thankfully, it's really easy using the command prompt. Once again, you can simply type conda install Keras, and this is going to actually use the Theano backend, and you can install that with conda or pip as well. So let's do this, and we're going to do a print Keras.version. Make sure we're all on the same page. So let's run this with shift enter once again. So sweet, it imported Jim version 
0 0.93, and then this is importing Keras successfully, and it says it's using the Theano backend. It's very nice that it tells us version 2. Um, if you want to change which backend it's using, you can go into your .keras folder, wherever this was saved, usually in your user directory. And this file right here, if we open it with a notepad or wordpad, It'll specify the backend, so you can change some of the configuration settings right here in this file. Um, this could be TensorFlow or Theano, those are your two options with Keras. For this project, we're going to use Theano though, so if you want the code to run, this is what you're going to have to have. But again, you only have to go in and edit that if this doesn't say Theano here. All right, let's import some of the other libraries that we're going to need to use. These should be a part of the Python standard library, so you shouldn't have to download or install any of them. Except for maybe NumPy. No, but that's standard. So these should work, but if not, again, you can get them with pip or conda. So let's go ahead and do shift enter, make sure this works, and yes, everything imported okay. All right, so let's get into actually building the OpenAI gym environment so we can play around with it and kind of understand what we're working with here. So first things first, we already did the import gym, so we need to, we don't need to do that again, but we do need to define our environment. We can do that simply using gym.make. And so we're gonna use the cart pull option because this, this is one of the environments that comes in the minimal, minimal installation. Um, it doesn't require any additional dependencies, plus it's a good project for us to solve. So we're gonna use that one. And then what we can do here is simply define a uh, like example scenario that runs the environment. It's not going to have any machine learning in it yet, but it will demonstrate what the network's going to do. So we're going to run a certain number of episodes, and that number is going to be 20. So if we run 20 ep episodes, we're going to have observations, and this is going to be the environment, whatever state the environment is, or like if we we're playing a board game, you know, with the position of the chips, this is going to be the current state of the environment. And we're going to reset that each time because we want to start from the beginning. So we're going to go for 100 time steps each time. And we can do environment render. Let's go ahead and print the observation just so we know what the state is and we can see what that looks like. We're also going to have an action, which is what we're going to do based off that state. Um, for this example, we're just going to sample one. So we'll take a sample out of all of the possible actions in the action space. Observation then, and reward, done status, and info is going to be equal to our environment step based off that action. And we can add an if done here. So if done, we're going to, we're going to break and we're going to print episode finished after we'll add this in here time steps we we'll do the dot format to substitute a variable into the string and then break as we mentioned so let's go ahead and run this and see if we can actually generate that environment mm, invalid syntax of course I put an equal I don't want that I want an in here we go, so made an environment, and here's our, actually our cart pull. So if you see, this is just balancing on top of this pull. It's stopping it every time after a, a hundred, but that's okay. So here we're also printing out our observations. So our, the state of our environment has four different variables, and this again is printing episode finished. Let's take this off for a second. And let's also make this a little bit longer so we can see it not cut off right away. So let's start this again. Mm -hmm. There, we, well, we're getting some balancing. This is based off the done status, actually. Um, so it's not going to. It's going to stop every time that it gets done. So we can't have this swing around. Let me let me take this take this off and see if it will just go. So there it was kind of swinging around. Let's try that one more time. Yeah, there we go. So that is our environment. And what we want to do is we want to teach a network to apply in either a force to the left or to the right so that it balances that pull 
on top of the little cart. So that that would be pretty hard to balance. You know, balancing a pole on its end is not easy to do in real life, but I think that we can train a a reinforcement learning algorithm to do this, and that is in fact the case. Let's explore some some other parts of our uh, observations and actions. So what I want to do is I want to do a print environment dot action space. So I know all the possible actions. And I want to do a print environment dot observation space. So these are going to tell us our possible action space, our possible actions, and all our possible observations. So this is telling us the types. And what this is saying is the discrete space allows a fixed range of non-negative numbers. And in this case, the valid actions are going to be either 0 or 1. And the box space represents an n-dimensional box. And valid observations for this case will be an array of four numbers. Um, so we can also check the box's bounds. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll do a print environment.observation space. So our max is high. And then let's print the lows as well. So here we go. Um, this is basically infinity, or infinity here, positive and negative infinity, um, and this is essentially essentially zero. Um, so this is the possible ranges of the observations. These are probably specifying things like location of the cart, location of the pole, um, and then of course this is just acting under the force of gravity. So. Our possible actions, we have two actions, 0 or 1. One's going to be a force to the left, probably 0. One's going to be a force to the right, probably 1. Although we could play around with that and figure out which one was it, which for sure. We're going to have an observation which gets returned as a result of that action, which is going to be defined by these four numbers. So that's that. We have all of the libraries we need imported. We have Keras set up with a Theano background. And we also have an open AI gym that's going to spin around and uh, have a pull on top of that cart that we can try to balance. So this is going to be fun, but we will start building our model in the next in the next video. So thanks for getting this all set up. We can dive into our network next. Keep listening. Um, so hopefully you got their op your OpenAI gym environment all set up last time. And I've kind of cleaned up the code that I was using to add in some comments here and everything's installed and importing correctly. Um, if that's all set up, then we should be good to go. Um, a cool thing about Jupyter Notebooks that I'd like to share really quick is that you can include markdown cells. So if I have a cell like this, I can simply go up here to cell, cell type, and change this to markdown. Now I can type comments in this that won't be, won't be ran as code. So for example, I can do two here and I can say define parameters because that's what we're going to be doing when I do shift enter and run that it just produces text. So if you're going to be sharing Jupyter Notebooks, this is such a valuable resource, include markdown cells because they're very helpful to explain what's going on. So hopefully you guys have access to this project and you can see some of these, some of these cells and uh, read them as such because they're very helpful. But that being said, let's keep going. We're going to start by defining the parameters that we're going to use for our network. Um, then we are going to get into actually building the neural network and defining some necessary functions, such as a run function, some pre-processing functions. And then we can actually get into training the network. So let's take a look and see how this works. All right, but first we have our training parameters. So we're going to have to specify these. Um, start with the number of episodes and we're gonna run this for a thousand episodes at most um, and the number of winning ticks so in the OpenAI gym environment um, every time step is called a tick and so our uh, our done state or our winning winning state is either gonna be when our pull tips over and that is it gets I believe the parameters are larger than 15 degrees from the center or outside the bounds of the little window. Or we hit the number of winning ticks, which is going to be 195 time steps. So max environment steps we need in there as well. This is for the open AI. We'll set this to none. All right, now let's get into some actual um, reinforcement learning parameters. We're going to start with gamma. 
and gamma is of course the discount factor and we're going to set this to one the discount factor does a couple things really it's what it is it simply is a consideration of future rewards so this is going to say um, should we take this step even though it might not be the best right now but it could give us a good result in the future we're going to set this to one in each case because we want the same policy, policies, the ones that are going to balance the pull, to be optimal at all times. So that's why we're setting this to one, and that's the discount factor. We're also gonna have epsilon, and we're gonna set this starting at one as well. And this is a factor that controls what's called exploration. So exploration is simply the agent um, choosing an action that it believes has the best long-term effect um, with a probability 1 minus epsilon. So, um, and it's going to choose an action uniformly at random otherwise. So starting with epsilon at 1, it's going to choose a uniformly random choice. So it's not going to use any type of machine learning. It's going to randomly pick a, a direction to go or a random force to, to use. I mean, this is a great way to avoid local minimum, but we don't want to be making random steps the whole time. So what we're going to do is we're going to have an epsilon decay and an epsilon min. So we're going to start with high exploration, just taking random steps, and then we're going to immediately start lowering this. So by the time we figure out how to actually balance the pull, we don't want to do any exploration anymore. We, we figure that's the correct solution and we can stay. So let's have an epsilon min. And we're going to set this to 0 0.01 and an epsilon to K. So how quickly it is going to stop exploring. And we'll just do uh, 0.995. So there is our decay. We're also going to need alpha. And alpha is the learning rate. Um, remember, this is going to determine to what extent the newly acquired information will override the old information. So if we had a learning rate of 0, we wouldn't learn anything at all. Um, if we had a learning rate of one, we would only consider the most recent result. But let's also have an alpha decay. So we're gonna lower this as well. Also, we need a batch size. So let's include that in here. Just for starters, let's do a batch size of 64 samples. And then this is some stuff for the OpenAI gym specifically. We're going to just do monitor equals false as well as quiet. And quiet we're going to use to control our print our print statements. All right, so those are our training parameters. We also need to get into some environment parameters to specify some stuff for the AI gym. So let's type this parameters all right and so what we we need is a memory and I guess this kind of is and kind of isn't part of the environment and we're gonna use that um, custom list parameter that we imported before so we can set a max length to this list and we're just gonna do a hundred thousand yep that's a hundred thousand um, so we can control the max length this is really just a list with um, some additional requirements with it our environment, we're going to do the gym.make, remember, and this is the cart pool. So there's that. And we're also going to have um, this if statement in here. And if that is true, we can do the environment max episode steps equals max environment steps. All right, we're going to also need that as well. So these should be good to go. Let's um, just shift enter, run that. Oh, I need to run my import statements again. So I'm, what I'm going to do is going to do a restart, clear all output, or and just run all. And that way it'll go through all my import statements at the start again and import the correct libraries. It's going to clear the output, and you'll see them coming back up. So look, there we go, 2.7, importing all this. And this guy's still going. Let's see. Let's stop that. 
I'm just going to click stop here. That guy's messing us up. But these we can just go through. These are all the same. Define parameters. Awesome. There we go. So all our libraries imported. We've got our environment. So let's move on. And we want to actually move on to building the neural network. So this is going to be a fun part. We're going to actually get to specify some parts of the network. But first, we need to import some, some other modules. Um, we already imported that, but we need from keras.models. We need the sequential model, since that's what we'll be building. And we need a couple layers. Import dense. We want the dense layer, which is, again, just a fully connected, the standard neural network layer. We're also going to use the Atom Optimizer. All right, so now let's put up our model definition. So start, we define what type of model it is. Well, it's a sequential model. So there's that. And then we can start adding layers. So we want a model.add. And we're going to start with a dense layer. And this is going to have 24 neurons on it, but it's going to have an input dimension of simply 4, because remember our... Our environment has four parameters that describe the current state of the environment. So that's why we want an input of four, because our input is the current environment. Activation, again, is just going to be the rectified linear unit. And there's that. So there's our first layer. Um, let's add a couple more in here, because we want to we want to build a deep reinforcement neural network, or reinforcement algorithm. Um, so we're going to have a couple hidden layers. And so we're going to add those now. And so we'll do that dense. We'll have this one expand a little bit. Don't have to spe specify the inputs anymore since it assumes the previous layer is the input, since it's sequential. And let's add one more. And we're going to do dense. And we want this to go down to 2. Because remember, um, our uh, action is either a force to the left or a force to the right. So we want to two possible outputs here and that's why we're coming back down to this output of two alright so there's that we also need to say how to compile this so model.compile loss which is the MSE and then the optimizer again is equal to the atom and so learning rate we already defined that that's just alpha and then the decay is alpha decay and there we go. So there's our network, and this should all compile. Let's try that with a shift enter. And it's building, and yes, everything looks good. So no typos this time. That's good. Um, we have our model definition, and we've compiled our model. It's uh, a neural network with three dense layers, all with the rectified linear units as the activation. Input dimensions of four, and then an the output of two, which is going to be our force a force to the left or a force to the right. But before we actually get into training this, we're going to have to define some necessary functions because these are going to come up a lot of the time, and so we need to get these out of the way now so that we don't have to type them in a bunch of different times. Um, we're going to have a function remember, a function choose action, get epsilon, preprocess state, as well as replay. So the first one, remember, is simply going to be setting up our memory which, remember, was the list that we we imported earlier, right up here. So this is going to have the state, the action, the reward that we got, the next state, and the done, whether it was done or not. So here's our definition, and we are just going to do a memory.append. So we have a state, action, reward, next state and done. So we're just going to append that to our current current memory. So that's that definition. We're going to have another one here, and this is the choose action. So this is where we actually uh, pick what to do based off the state and our epsilon, which, remember, is our exploration factor. So this is going to ch change depending on the value of epsilon. So what we want to return here is the action space sample. And if we have the MP, which is NumPy, random number, and this is actually 
less than or equal to our epsilon, it's going to choose this random action. So at the start, when epsilon is equal to 1, this is going to choose a random action here and randomly from the action space. If not, what we're actually going to get is um, our model making a prediction, a prediction based off the current state. So what does our model think that we should do given that our uh, environment is in this current state? So starting random, if, we, if we're in an exploration stage, at the end we want our model to be predicting, predicting the, the force and direction that we should use. All right, so there's that definition. We also need a def get epsilon. So based off t, where we are in the uh, episode, we're going to return the max of epsilon min, or the minimum of epsilon, or this here, log 10, t plus 1 times epsilon decay. So towards the end we're going to be we're going to be decreasing substantially. At the start we're going to be um, right up here at epsilon. So there's that and uh, that'll come up fairly often. We're going to have to have a pre-process pre-process the state and this is simply to make sure that it is in the right input format. So we are going to return the numpy reshape of the state and simply transpose it into a column here. So one row, four columns, and that should be good to go. All right, finally, last one is we have the replay. So this is going to be important. So let's go through this. And it's going to be based off the batch size and epsilon. Right. So we're going to have to define a few things here. We're going to have an X batch and a Y batch. And those are going to start out as such, just empty lists. We're going to have a mini batch, random sample. So randomly sample from the memory or the minimum of length memory and batch size. All right. And then what we're going to do, so we're going to have a for statement here for the state and the action and reward next state and done, which we're getting out of the memory in our mini batch, which we randomly just selected. What we're going to have is a Y target. And this is what our model is going to predict. So model.predict state. So that's the target. And then y target 0 and action equals reward. So we're going to get a reward if that's the correct target to be predicting. So if done, else a reward. And this is going to where, where gamma comes in times the np max model dot predict next state. And this is going to take the first parameter of that. All right, so this is giving us a reward if we are correctly predicting our target. Um, this is based off gamma, so changing gamma will change what type of rewards we get, which again is makes sense since the gamma is the discount factor or controlling um, whether or not we want to value current rewards or future rewards. So that's the start, but we're not quite done in this function here. So that's our Y target, but we also have an X, X batch here. And we want to append the state. So that keeps growing. And the Y batch dot append Y target is zero. There we go. All right, and we're going to use this information to train our model. So this is where the actual training comes in. We're going to have the numpy array based off the X batch, np dot array y batch, batch size, and verbose is just whether or not to be making print statements off of this. And I have an extra parentheses in here somewhere. 
Ah, I forgot one here. There we go. Let's take off this extra guy. There's that. And we want to update our Epsilon each time because we want to progressively get less explorative. So as long as we're still greater than our Epsilon min, what we're going to do is Epsilon times equals. So this is going to be the current value of Epsilon times our Epsilon decay. So this is going to be reassigning the value of epsilon to whatever it was previously multiplied by our epsilon decay, which if you remember, we defined up here as 0.995. So it'll decrease slightly each time it goes through this. So each time we call the replay function, we'll lower our epsilon, we'll fit our model based off of whether or not we're getting a good reward. So these are, these are our nice setup functions that we're going to use all the time. But now we're actually going to have to progress to defining a run function, which is actually going to run through these and train the network. So let's make sure those compile. Yes, they do. So that's good. We can move on. Define run functions. So this is going to record the environment state and use our network to choose the best action to take. So let's define this here. Run, we don't need any parameters into this. going to have uh, scores that we're going to keep track of, and this is going to have a much smaller deck, um, max length. So for E, and E here is going to be our episode. So that's why we're going to have the number of episodes here. We're going to get a state. We're going to pre-process this. So we're going to use our function that we defined above. Environment.reset. So we want to start from the beginning each and every time. We want to make sure our done is equal to false. And we're just going to have time step equals zero here for, for i. So while not done, so while done is false, which it is now, um, we are going to take the following actions. So first one action is going to be choose action state and based off our epsilon for that current episode. So here we have our action calling the choose action function, which remember is taking a random action from the sample space if we have a high epsilon, but otherwise it's going to be using our model to predict what action we should take based off the current state. So that's what we want. And then what we're going to get, so next state, the reward and done, and we'll just leave this blank here, is going to be equal to environment.step based off this action. So this is the OpenAI environment taking one time step forward. And let's render this as well so that we can see what's going on. So next state is going to be equal to preprocess state next state. So we have to preprocess that again. And this is why we defined this earlier because it's coming up a lot of different times. And we want to remember this information because it's going to go into our memory. Next state and done. There's that. And remember, remember, let's hope that I can spell it right. State is going to be now our next state. So we took that action and we are going to bump up our time step one. So plus equal, just like the multiply equal, it's going to take the current i and add one to it and reassign that to the value of i. So there's that. Too many, too many tabs here. So after coming out of this while statement, we should have done now. So it, it's finished. The poll either tipped over or we hit the max number of ticks. So we're going to have a scores.append. We'll keep track of our scores here. And so our score is simply how long we want it. We stayed up. So the number of ticks that we stayed up. That's why up here we defined our uh, number of winning ticks as 195. So if we can go through this process 195 times, choosing an action um, and processing and rendering the state based off that action 195 times, we'll get a done statement. So let's append that score. We're going to take the mean score so that we know we're not just getting lucky one of the times. And then so we can have a couple of if statements here to print stuff out depending on what we get. So if mean score. It's greater than or equal to our number of winning ticks. And we'll also throw this in there 
just to make sure nothing happens right when we start. So we'll make sure we go a couple episodes. If not quiet, which is why we had the quiet statement up there before, print ran, and we'll use the dot format, format notation here again. Ran episodes solved after trials. So that's what we want. And here, remember, no period yet. We can go dot format and then substitute in E, which is our episode, and then E minus 100 will give us the number of trials. All right. And we're also going to have a return E minus 100 as well. All right, we have an if statement here. So if E is divisible by 100, evenly divisible by 100, and not quiet, what we want to do is we want to print the episode. So we'll say episode. So we'll print the episode number, and we'll say mean survival time over last 100 episodes. It was ticks or time steps? So we'll have that dot format again. So episodes, and then our mean score. So there we go. So actually, I'm going to change this to 20. This would print this out every 100 episodes. That's going to take a little bit. So we'll do every 20 episodes just so we can see how the the model is doing more frequently. All right, so let's move on into our replay, our all important, all important replay function here. So I'm going to do replay batch size and epsilon. So we can actually train the network based off the results that we got. Then we can do one more. We'll say if not quiet, print did not solve after blank episodes. So this is sad. We hope this doesn't come up. But we don't want our model to run forever if it's not converging. So we'll, we'll include this in here. We'll return the episodes as well. OK. So here we have our run function. We have all the functions that are used within the run function. And we are choosing an action based off the current state. We are using those actions to train our model here. Um, and we're changing some of our parameters. So we have epsilon decay going here. We also have alpha decay, which is changing our learning rate. Um, but we should be good to go. So let's do a shift enter here. Invalid syntax. Let's make sure that hmm, we have an extra guy here. Much better. So that compiles. But now let's get into training the network. So this is where we're actually going to run it. Um, kind of a, a bummer about the way the OpenAI gym is working and the way it works in conjunction with Jupyter Notebooks is that it's not going to run very well since we already initiated the environment up here. So what we're going to do is we are going to copy our our functions here and we're just going to copy and paste them all the way down into one cell so it'll start environment and run all at once so i'm going to go through here and do this really quick you should as well so all i'm doing is highlighting the cells control c and then i'm going to come down here and write it all in one one cell and we can take these print functions out here we don't need to be printing the version every single time so we have our our imports here. Um, we're going to have a couple more later when we import the uh, the uh, specific layers that we're using for our neural network. We don't need this guy here. This is the environment that we initialized earlier. So that's the one that's kind of messing us up. We do need our parameters. So let's take these. We also have some more of our model information. So building the actual neural network. I'm going to take this, 
paste that down there. Make sure these are good. So we're importing our different model layers, building our model. All right, so we have those. Let's take our functions that we defined. Control C, copy these down. And again, this is just because of the way OpenAI works. Once the environment's initialized, it wants to run all the way through. And so it doesn't have an easy time switching between cells to do that. But this should work just fine. Taking all these down here. So we have all of our functions. We have our run function as well. Now we just need to call it. So everything's defined in the run. What we can do is simply type run, and this will run this definition right here, this function, which has everything in it that we need. So if everything works well, this will start training. So let's see what we get. And again, shift enter. So we made a new environment. Mm. Ah, well, that's an issue. Let's see, what line is this on? 95? There we go. <laughs> that might work better. Looks like we're starting something up down here. Oh, that was the wrong one. Mm -hmm. Ah, here we go. And so here we go. And you see it's ending pretty quick. So the mo it stops whenever this pole gets to 15 degrees to the side. And uh, it's not learning too quickly here. Because you can see our, uh, our, tick our mean survival time is actually going down. Which means we have an issue with our, with our model here. So that's no good. It looks like we are not lowering the epsilon the way that we should be. Um, I think what we need to do here in this replay, ah, uh, yes, I should have a get epsilon here so that it's using an ups updated epsilon each time. Because otherwise this epsilon staying at one and it's just choosing a random action each time. This is why you see it's not getting any better in effect. It's almost getting worse because it's never using the model to choose an action. It's always going off that exploration value of epsilon equals one and choosing a random action. So let's see if this works better this time. So initializes. Here we go. So we're starting off poorly again which makes sense, but there we go. So we're starting to see some improvements. Gradually getting better. And it certainly doesn't learn too quickly, but we are heading in the right direction. Getting much better at balancing it now. And remember, our winning number of ticks is 195. So this is going to have to get pretty good at balancing this. As well as it's a mean over the last 100 episodes as as well. So the max number of ticks is 200. It's going to cut it off there. So even if we have one that tips over in, say, quick 10 ticks, that's going to kill our mean. So we're going to have to pretty much balance this perfectly each and every time, which our network is starting to do. So this is pretty cool to see, though. Um, our network is actually learning which forces it needs to apply to this little cart at the bottom in order to balance it. And look, it's doing very good that time. And it's using that information to update its parameters and train itself to do better and better each time. So our epsilon value is still probably not our epsilon min, so we're still going to take some random actions because we want to make sure that we are um, not stuck in like a local minima or something like that. So getting much better now, you're going to start to see our, our mean number of ticks go, go up pretty dramatically. And it looks like it's it's almost has it. Um, we're only in uh, not quite episode 100 yet. Remember, our max number of episodes was 1,000. So this has a while to go. Um, it would be pretty disappointing if it didn't get it fairly fairly well by that time.
And so you can see it kind of get stuck into local minima where it's always pushing it off to one side. And that's why we really want to take some of these random actions. But overall, it's starting to do very well. So I'm going to let it go until we can see here, um, see it keep improving. The car pull certainly isn't as cool as maybe like an Atari game or a game of chess or checkers, but it's the same concept, so it's incredible to see it learn this this sequence of forces to actually balance this. I mean, have you tried it balancing the pull on your hand? Not quite as easy as it would look. Certainly possible, though. And this is a network that's learning to do exactly that very quickly. So we're only up to 63.11 ticks here, and again, this is... This is averaging, this is actually our average over all of the episodes that we've run since we're only on episode 100. These first ones are mean survival time over actually less than 100 episodes since we didn't have 100 episodes up until this point. but still getting substantially better. But let's talk a little bit about some of our principles of experimental design in machine learning. Let's say this converges in a couple hundred episodes and we hit our winning number of ticks. Does that mean we have the best algorithm out there? Certainly not. Furthermore, we might have the best model definition, but not the best parameters. So please play around with some of these hyperparameters and see if you can get better results. Um, changing the bats, batch size, changing epsilon, gamma, or alpha, or learning rate are all going to impact how well our algorithm performs. What happens if you add another dense layer in there? So some of these things um, you can do to start doing that factorial search for the best algorithm. We really want to compare all of these different parameters and make sure we're optimizing them um, correctly. But remember again that this is this is training. So if I run this network, it's going to converge in a certain number of ticks, I'm assuming. And I've done this all the way through, so I know that it will. Um, but that number of ticks or number of episodes is not going to be exactly the same for each training scenario. So really what we should do is run this a couple of times and take our average number or average number of episodes to our winning criteria and then use that instead of just running it once. So if you're looking for the best parameters, you want to run it a couple of times. I know not everybody has that amount of time available, but ultimately that's what we should be doing. And this is actually a really cool part of OpenAI Gym and one of the reasons that it was built. They have all these different environments that they encourage people to build different algorithms for and then um, post here so that other people can see how well you're doing. So some of these episodes before solve, um, zero, there is a way to simply solve this without machine learning. But some of these other ones have really good uh, write-ups about what they did. And so this is a way for people to compare their algorithms and compare the results so people can start finding the best solutions. You know, OpenAI is uh, kind of committed to making artificial intelligence research available to everyone. So this is a way that they are making it open source and available in that they are comparing different people's algorithms through this, through these different environments. So look, we're almost to our winning scenario here. We're at 145, so getting much better here. Although you see it still messes up sometimes. So it's not quite there. But still, very good at balancing this pull compared to what it was when we first started. So I hope yours is up in training as well, and uh, you are getting good results from it. I, I encourage you to play around with the hyperparameters because it will really help you start to understand how some of these parameters affect the actual learning that's going on. Add some layers, add a bunch of layers, make a huge dense layer, play around with it and see what you can get.
This is kind of like the TensorFlow Playground where you're playing around with the neural network and so you can start to see some of those different parameters actually affect your results. So hopefully this has been a fun tutorial for you. It was fun for me to make, certainly in this class, was certainly an enjoyment as well. So thank you for listening and following along if you have been doing so through all the lectures. I hope this has been a good introduction to machine learning and that you can now use some of these features and program them in Python just like we have shown through some of these projects. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for listening. I hope your reinforcement algorithm is up and learning. Thank you very much.